So I'm here today with Trevor Mitchell, who is Executive Director of American Mensa. Trevor, American Mensa is going through a rebrand. Yes. Tell us why. So the organization itself is just about 70 years old, and it has had a lifespan of, of various things, but what we're failing to do right now is be able to connect with our current members and potential members on why our organization is still relevant. So we're looking at how do we take the organization itself and humanize it and create that personal connection for those who are interested in understanding more about us as well as our current members. And we need to really strengthen that up if we want to continue for another 75 years. So what's the brand today of American Mensa? So the brand today is really focusing on how individuals are part of this community, part of this tribe. So we focus on, uh, one of our mission statements is where intelligence belongs. Um, because what we want to do is we say this is an organization that celebrates and respects and honors and is uh, a community for those who have and score in high intelligence that we are your resource, we are your home. And we want to bring that personal connection back to the individual and to the organization so they're proud of it as well as in, in becoming advocates for the organization. Trevor, what does this rebrand look like? What are you doing? So we're doing a lot of things. Uh, first thing is, uh, from a brand itself, the M our name, our image, is actually what we consider bigger than the organization's membership as a whole. So for, one of our uh, elements is focusing on branding and leveraging the licensing of that brand from a, a national and global perspective. So how does that then connect back to the organization? We're very strategic in what we're doing in terms of aligning ourselves with companies and products that support intelligence, support learning, support education, um, because we just don't want to put our name on anything. Um, so that has been one major focus that we're doing. The other one is actually looking at identifying uh, from an individual basis some of the stories about our current members. How do we take and humanize and tell the stories that our members are, they can be those neurosciences and rocket scientists, but they're also teachers, they're stay-at-home parents, they are writers, they are artists, they are in the military, they, they span all of these professions and interests that were not just those core stereotypes that people think of us. So we're looking at how do we show that diversity within our organization and that that diversity is for everyone. How will you know that this is working? <laughs> the way I think we'll, right now we're looking to see if this is working is understanding uh, and looking at our members who are coming into the organization now. Trying to identify and see if there are any trends in terms of uh, diversity, in terms of ethnicity, race, uh, gender, uh, 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 sexual orientation, any of those things. Because a lot of our focus is on hitting on what is outside of this stereotypical uh, white male, which has been our primary concentration and membership. So we're looking to see what is what is that actually doing? Are we seeing increases in those areas? And are our members through our membership surveys and various focus groups uh, aligning themselves with the branding that we're doing? By doing that, we should, if those things are working correctly, we'll see increases in our membership growth, uh, increases in our engagement in the organization, and a stronger positive public image overall for the organization. Wow, Trevor, a lot going on. We'll be sure to follow your progress. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching the Matrix Minute. Don't forget to connect with us on our blog and social media. For more information, go to matrix